hello students in this video we are uh, study we are going to study how we will define or how we will distinguish the low gravity dam and high gravity dam on which basis we say that uh, this dam is the low or the higher one <music> Uh, uh, slide or in previous uh, recording we had studied the elementary profile uh, and practical profile so uh, the, in the elementary profile we had derived normal stresses we had derived principal stresses as well as the shear stresses in the elementary profile on the hill section because we are not considering the uplift pressure we are not taken consideration uh, taken into consideration the uplift pressure hence the uh, hill part will be equal to zero that that's why the normal stresses on the hill uh, then principal stresses on the hill as well as the shear stresses on the hill is equal to the zero so uh, we got only the to equation uh, for the normal principal and shear stresses so by using that equation principal stresses at the toe we are using this equation we got the equation is this sigma 1 is equal to gamma into h s is h is nothing but the height height or we can say that the, the height of a gravity dam that is or height of a water which is available on the upstream side because uh, uh, we uh, we are going to draw this elementary profile and we are uh, discussing we had already discussed that uh, while this while uh, discussing and while finalizing the section of a uh, profile of a dam first we are taken the base of a water pressure the water pressure which is available on the upstream side the uh, it it has a triangular shape pressure diagram or distribution of a pressure then likewise this we got the elementary profile of a gravity dam as a right angled triangular section and why we had adopted this section we had already discussed so uh, we got the equation that is sigma 1 is equal to gamma into h into bracket Rho, you see, this rho is nothing. Uh, is it is not a density. Uh, my mistake is there. So rho is a specific gravity. In this book, they uh, they are uh, written down a, a very different notation. They are given us because generally we are using this uh, uh, symbol for the density. So in previous uh, video, uh, in some part, uh, I had told you that this rho is nothing but a density. But yes. you can use the density of uh, any material you can use the density of a fluid uh, of or water here and uh, you got the same answer uh, we know that specific gravity um, uh, it is equal to the even the uh, density of a um, any fluid divided by the density of a standard fluid so standard fluid we are taking as a water or in other terms specific gravity is equal to the unit weight of a fluid that the unit weight that we have to find out or the unit weight of any material any fluid is given it's divided by the unit weight of a standard liquid so standard liquid again we can adopt it as a water so yes you can simply put that equation here also for finding out the specific gravity but uh, in this equation this rho this is uh, generally uh, denoted by the g capital g specific gravity according to me uh, so here the equation is, uh, is uh, sigma 1 is equal to gamma into h into bracket it's rho that is a specific or g specific gravity minus c coefficient of uplift plus 1 that equation we had uh, got in the uh, elementary profile section uh, the principal stresses which are acting on the toe so in uh, if you uh, if you can see in this e equation uh, all other factors excluding the h all other factors are constant gamma unit weight is constant 
if you are using water so unit weight is 9810 or 9.81 kilo newton per meter cube uh, rho that if this is uh, if we consider that this is a specific gravity so water it's one c according to the assumption or criteria of uplift pressure we are using uh, or we are considering that uh, the c is also one so uh, all the factors are constant here only the variable is the height height of a tank so this uh, uh, we uh, according to this the prince while uh, discussing the compression mode of failure we had uh, discussed that uh, this maximum pressure uh, the maximum value of this principal stresses as well as the normal stresses should not be exceeded than the allowable stresses of a material so a uh, gravity dam is made up of a masonry or uh, made up of a concrete so here the allowable stress for the concrete uh, i had already told that is its value its limiting value is 3000 kilonewton per meter square for the compressive zone and for the tension it's a uh, 500 kilonewton per meter square so uh, the maximum value of this principal stresses should not be exceeded than the allowable stresses this is the condition so uh, for the limiting or in the limiting case uh, if we put that value that is f allowable stress it is nothing or it is equal to the sigma 1 that is principal stresses acting on the toe so uh, f is equal to gamma into h into bracket g minus c plus 1 so from which the height of a h can be find out yes uh, here h uh, is equal to the f is the allowable stress if i am using the concrete so i know the allowable stress value if i am using the masonry so the value is given in the numerical uh, so this is uh, we can directly simply substitute that value here gamma is the unit weight g is the specific gravity or rho is the specific gravity c is the coefficient of uplift and plus one one is a constant so simply by substituting all the value we can find out the height so this is the main equation see again uh, yes uh, refer that diagram again uh, in previous in previous equation in this equation uh, this c factor because we are assuming according to the criteria of design of uplift pressure or according to the IS uh, Indian standard recommendation, the uh, assume it's it, it is assumed that the uplift pressure acts over a hundred percent of area. So we can easily or we can say that uh, this C is nothing but equal to one. Or uh, sometimes uh, or usually while uh, taking in. Uh, while designing the elementary profile or while deciding the elementary profile of a gravity dam so here we are generally uh, neglect the uplift pressure even in a uh, elementary profile section also we had neglected that uplift pressure so that the c value becomes zero so uh, we consider that yes uplift pressure will not generated because only there is a water pressure okay so yes we had uh, uh taken uh, we had take that or took that uh, force uh, while considering uh, the forces acting on the elementary profile uh, and we uh, substitute that value but why because we want to find out the vertical forces and vertical forces uh, we got by subtracting the self weight of a dam uh, minus uh, uplift pressure so for that purpose only we are uh, considering that uplift pressure area uh, force or uh, area according to that uplift pressure diagram so here if uh, we neglect that uplift pressure so c becomes zero so finally we got the equation as h is equal to f upon gamma into uh, g specific gravity plus one so this is the final equation see based on this equation uh, we are going to distinguish or we are going to decide that whether this dam is low or whether this dam is high so simply if the h value uh, when uh, or by substituting the value of a uh, allowable stress uh, unit weight then uh, specific gravity after substituting the value if the height value is less 
or is lower okay is uh, less than the this equation uh, the value is less than this equation then we are saying that this is the low gravity dam see a low gravity dam is the one in which the height h is less than this equation the, that equation because if uh, we are substituting all the value here that this value are standard one see uh, if uh, we are taking that uh, that uh, material is a concrete one okay so here we are adopting allowable stress for the concrete it is equal to or it ranges from 2940 to 3000 so if we want to uh, substitute the value as a 30 or um, uh, 3000 kilonewton per meter square so substitute that value unit weight of material it is 9.81 kilonewton per meter square again specific gravity for the concrete is uh, 2.4 again plus 1 so after substituting this value we got the h value ranges from 88 to 90 meter okay so if the height of a dam is less than the 88 meter or this equation then this dam is called as a low gravity dam and yes if the value of a h or a height of a dam is greater than this uh, 88 or 90 meter then it is uh, called as a high gravity dam so see what happened exactly if the height of a dam is more than the uh, equation this equation so what happened in uh, you can see this diagram you know, just observe that diagram uh, a is a low dam and b is the higher dam so low dam the height of a dam is lesser than the equation or, or the value that we had uh, got by substituting all the standard values here so if the uh, height is less so what happened the maximum compressive stresses is not greater than the allowable stress these stresses should keep or should lie within the range within the permissible limit so no need to provide extra section no need to provide extra uh, section that uh, or extra slope on uh, both the uh, side that is upstream and downstream side so simply we can adopt adopt this height and we uh, can design this uh, low gravity dam easily so this is the simplest one but if the height of a dam is exceeded then the uh, this equation the previous equation then what happened the maximum compressive stresses will exceed the permissible stresses yes and what happened uh, because of this uh, the section will have to give an extra slope. You can see this. This is the reason. So in previous section also, when we uh, we had designed and we had discussed the practical profile of a dam because of the top width, because of the roadway forces uh, uh, exerting by this roadway and any extra material or extra factors. Because of this factor, we are setting out and we are finalizing the practical profile this is actually done in the practical or in the practical set and the elementary that can be a theoretical part and that just by uh, analyzing by taking the research by doing uh, or by observing the forces uh, doing uh, uh, or considering any assumptions so based on this uh, part only the elementary profile of the gravity dam had been design and practical one is the practical actual practical the work that has been done in the site practically so because of this uh, we got the idea that we got idea that uh, because of this uh, external factors the extra load will come on the profile of a gravity dam so we have to provide some extra machinery on the upstream side we have to provide the uh, slope on the downstream side etc etc so that part we had done in the practical profile so here also while deciding and while designing the high gravity dam so uh, the reason is that when the height is exceeded than the um, 88 or 90 meter or this equation if this is greater so the compressive stresses see we are using the concrete so concrete has a 
good in a compressive zone and even in a mood of a failure and again i mean again and again repeating this remember mood of a failure the compression and crushing part in that part only we had discussed that what happened if the resultant will move towards the toe, toe. resultants uh, will uh, shift uh, when this shift towards the toe and beyond the toe what happened this fail immediately fell with the, uh, without giving any warning so this is the major and very dangerous collapse or very dangerous failure of a gravity dam so to avoid this we have to check that we have to analyze this part properly so uh, because of this this uh, maximum uh, or this compressive stresses uh, will be greater than the permissible compressive stresses and because of this reason only we have to provide the extra slopes on the upstream side or on the downstream side below the limiting height uh, below that uh, height of a uh, gravity dam this is so you can see the uh, dotted line is the limit of a gravity dam and beyond this we are providing the extra slopes so that uh, the compressive stress uh, lie within the limit only so this is the reason uh, so uh, at, based on these points uh, you can simply distinguish uh, the low gravity dam and high gravity dam see uh, in the previous recording and in previous um, uh, section also uh, the question will be, uh, will be asked like this distinguish between the elementary profile and practical profile okay so you have to write down all the parts, uh, parts. see uh, you need not to write down any detailed part just write down what is exactly elementary profile and what is exactly practical profile which factors are affecting on the elementary profile and uh, as well as on the practical profile so you have to write down see if the question will uh, ask for the five marks so you have to write down five to six points if the question will ask for the 10 marks you have to write down you have to uh, make the uh, you have to make the more points uh, that uh, explain that elaborate what is exactly a uh, elementary and practical so you have the equation also in the elementary profile the shear stress is equal to this principal stresses is equal to this why the principal stresses is zero on the hill part so even in the practical also on the upstream side you are going to provide the extra masonry to what for what purpose yes so you have to write down all these parts so that part we had con completed in the previous recording in this part also you know, the question will be asked like this uh, distinguish between the low and gravity dam for the five marks or uh, yes this question uh, will be only uh, uh, reliable for the five marks only it should not be asked for the 10 marks and eight marks because uh, there is no other points to distinguish that uh, both the parts uh, in a uh, detailed manner so we have the equation basic equation with us and based on this equation uh, we are distinguishing that low gravity dam and high gravity dam and you can uh, also draw the diagram of a low and high dam and you can write down the why the extra slopes are provided on the in the uh, high gravity dam and low gravity dam we, we need not to provide any extra slopes so uh, that part and that points will give you the uh, not full marks but at least four or four and a half marks so this is how uh, you have to write down the answer for this question so i hope you understand what is exactly high and low gravity dam see we are uh, moving like one by one of what is exactly a gravity dam then what are the forces acting on it then how these forces uh, um, Will, is responsible for uh, uh, for or for do giving the failure of this uh, section of a dam then uh, to uh, avoid this what we have to do or what uh, the precaution we have to take in, then the profile of why for the setting up and for discussing the profile of a gravity dam what points uh, should be taken into consideration uh, then the deciding the height limiting height of a gravity dam so what is exactly a low and gravity dam so up to this we had completed and i hope you understand all this part so uh, let's uh, uh, see in the next recording that what is exactly galleries
Thanks for watching this video.